Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. I gotta be honest with you, it's a miracle I ever get anything done. And whenever I do finish something, it holds together and it actually works. So, last weekend I didn't put out a video. Uh, I was doing other things. My wife and I went on a bicycle ride on the Natchez Trace Highway. Uh, it's really a neat system that kind of cuts through Tennessee and I think it goes into Mississippi or Alabama or something. I don't know. Sorry, people of Natchez. Uh, anyway, it's very cool. They got it all set off. It's just a two-lane highway. Um, it's like 50, 55 miles an hour. There's actually no cell phone reception at all on it. It's very bizarre. You get within 100 yards of it or meters or wherever you are, uh, and you get your cell phone. But then as soon as you're on the thing, you don't have any. It's very strange. I'm not really sure how they do that. Anywho, that was what we did last weekend, Sunday. And then Saturday, I went to a car show with the Jeep. Anyway, but throughout the week, I've been getting together uh, all the po components because I want to uh, make this steering work. And yesterday, I spent the whole day wiring up my little Arduinos and my motor controller and, and stuff. And today, I was all excited. I came out here, and all I needed to do was connect the two big power wires to my actuator, run them into my motor speed control that I already have hooked up to the Arduino, which is hooked up to my steering situation. And then run that into the battery. And that's what I did. Except I reverse polarity would it. <laughs> this is a DC-DC converter. So this takes 12 volts and converts it to 5 volts to directly power the Arduino. Last time I did this, I was doing it on my on the couch in the living room because it was hot. And everything would work fine as long as the computer was plugged into the Arduino. But as soon as I unplugged the computer, then the Arduino would just pop. There was like a voltage regulator, I think it's that I think it's that one, not sure. Would just uh turn red <laughs> and all the smoke came out of it. And I did that to two of them. And I didn't want to do that again. So I consulted with my buddy Colin, and he suggested that maybe uh, I should just get a, uh, a dedicated power supply for the Arduino. That way there wouldn't be any, like, backfeeding of voltage or amperage or whatever. I don't pretend to know. So I did that, and uh, I tested it, and the voltage regular VCDC worked. And then I went to hook it up this morning, and I put the polarity backwards and burnt it out and let the smoke out of the motor controller. Now, fortunately, that's the motor controller I killed. But fortunately, knowing me knowing me, I always buy two of everything because I know I'm going to screw something up. Well, I didn't buy two of those, so I had to go on Amazon and order them. I'll get them this next week. So that's fine. I could probably uh, go ahead and, and run power into this motor controller and make this thing work. But I'm not going to do that because uh, I want to do it right. And I want it to be connected like it's supposed to. But anyway. So uh, one kind of interesting thing. I made a schematic. Uh, and what's going on here. I'm going to show you this one because this is more updated. So uh, coming the signal wires coming out of the steering. Uh, I don't know if you see my mouse there. It's up there by steering. So the signal wires coming out. The schematic for the steering sensor suggested putting a 4.7 micro pico farad capacitor and a 10k ohm resistor between the output signal of the steering and ground so i said okay so i did that and while i was at it i went ahead and did that with the actuator too i asked one of my buddies on facebook's nathan i said why is this like that and he gave me an answer i can't tell you what the answer is because He's smart, and he told me that that's probably not a bad idea, so I did it. And uh, that is actually, that's what that little little hump right there is. Uh, so that's that. And apparently it just uh, clears the signal. It clears that, um, that low voltage signal uh, from any distractions, I guess electrical distractions. I don't know. But anyway, so that's where I'm at with this thing. Something that's kind of cool, you notice I got a hood on there now. Uh, I just kind of set that up there the other day just to kind of see where it is. And to my alarm, there's like a little 
bulkhead in there that sets right on top of a bolt that's on the back of that battery. I'm like, oh, cool. So I may end up just running with that. I may end up just making a more solid mount on the back of that battery and using it as uh, what holds the hood up because, man, that's like right where it needs to be. So I dig it. Mm -hmm. And, oh, the big news is my steering. Uh, I would love to just take this all apart for you and show you how this works. So what we got going on here is a new a new crossbar, new cross link, and it's got a little block down there welded, and it's got a heim joint that's going into the front of my actuator here. This is a piece that I had made on version one of this actuator uh, steering system, and it's just going into a heim joint that screws into this block, and it goes on to this new and improved cross link. And it goes over to that link, connecting the two halves together, doing the steering. But right here, right here's the money. What we got going on here is a, a taper, two, a pair of tapered roller bearings. And this is just kind of like in in a uh, tack, in a tire, an axle, like a front axle in a uh, rear wheel drive car is gonna or a trailer or something like that. It's gonna have tapered roller bearings, and they are super strong. They're super strong, and there's no play. And there's low friction, and that's what I needed. That's what I needed for this. I needed to get that play out of here. Because if you remember, I was having all kinds of trouble with uh, with movement, with lost motion. And if you see this now, there's still some there. And there's always going to be some. But, I mean, let's be honest. In, a, in the steering system of a lawnmower, there's, you know, there's play. So... It's a lawnmower, and I'm not going to be going very fast with this. If I was going to be doing 60 miles an hour or something, I'd have to do something else. But I, I think the top speed on this is going to be about 30, and I doubt if I'll do that more than once or twice just to, just to see how it goes. But uh, I think that's going to be just fine. And the only, the only lost motion now is just any, uh, any slack that is within this actuator here. So there's a, a ball screw. It's called a ball screw. So uh, you think of I'm not going to try and explain it. Look it up on the internet. It's a ball screw actuator. And there is a little bit of play in that. And that's just how it's going to be. There's also a little bit of play back here on this rear pivot. And there may be a little bit on here in the front in the heim joint. So, so that's how it's going to be. And it works really good. Uh, let me see if I can make this work. And uh, I'll show you how it works. I mean, it, doesn't, it, looks, it looks the same as it has in previous videos. But uh, we'll do it again anyway. So check it out. Maybe. Maybe. So yeah, the thing is so fast. Um, one thing I'm hoping for is when I get this Arduino thing sorted out, it should send a, a pulse width modulated. Um, oh, actually, since I've got it turned, let's look at let's look let's look at that. So. So when I got this Arduino hooked up, it should send a pulse width modulated signal to that motor speed controller. And if I don't turn the wheel really fast, it should send a very slow pulse width signal to this actuator. And we'll hopefully slow this thing down. I'm hoping that it doesn't just do like a, you know, on slash off situation because it's it's just too fast. I mean, this would not have, I'd be all over the place. So... Um, we're gonna have to see how, how well that works. Yeah, I mean, look at that dude, that's so fast. So, anyway, um, I need to get it back to where it was. Mm, hold on, sorry. There we go. Yeah, so that's pretty awesome. It works really good, and like I say, the, the uh, taper bearing is doing a very good job of, of um, calming down that lost motion. So I'm pleased as can be about that. Yeah. So there you go. That's my update for this week. And um, I don't know that I'm going to do much more to it this weekend. I have a new project. This is a 1980 Volkswagen Rabbit pickup truck. It's got a little one and a half liter diesel. Uh, this is sort of like a barn find. Uh, the plan here is to get this thing running and run it on biodiesel. But that's uh, for another video series. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you next time.